everybody? Welcome to the channel. I got something cool here for you today. This is a Honda EM400 portable generator. This one was made in 1976. So this one came with the manual. Just do a little reading. The EM400 is a gasoline air-cooled generator with a manual recoil starter, automatic choke, and solid state voltage regulator. Yeah, so this generator puts out uh, 120 volts AC and 12 volts DC at 300 watts. So I picked up this generator for cheap on Marketplace. The guy I bought it from said he stopped using it because it wouldn't idle. It's been sitting on a shelf for a while and my goal is to get it running and keep it for myself. This looks to be in pretty good condition, uh, a little dirty, but it does have good compression. I was told that the fuel and oil were drained out of this before I picked it up, so we can start there. Uh, but something I noticed was... It doesn't want to sit flat. Seems like something in the back here got bent out of shape, so... I'm going to take it apart, hammer on the case a little bit to get it to fit back together right, and uh, see if we can get it running. Got the uh, extra spark plug and fuse inside and a little tool kit. It's pretty cool. You can see here, these are supposed to be just 90 degree, these sides, 90 degree to the top. And you can see it's bowed out like a little bit there, just a little bit here. Case got squeezed out at the back. Oh yeah. Less bad on this side real bad on this side. It might have been dropped or something. Probably doesn't affect how it works at all. It doesn't look like anything is touching. Maybe the coil down here, maybe the ignition coil. I will have to hammer these out, that I know for sure. So I got the case off. You can see everything's really crammed in there. Uh, this thing is way heavier than it looks too. and This is why there's not any empty space inside. So uh, it sounds like there's a little fuel in the tank. Um, gonna get the tank disconnected and drained. Uh, I guess I'll check to drain the oil too. I thought it would have been empty, but you know, open to being surprised. These side panels that I took off the case was definitely dropped at one point. I need to make that corner. I'm going to pull this completely down and out. have to do some work on the case to get it to fit back together, but it should be pretty easy. Uh, next, I'll take the tank off. Fuel tank removed. Now I want to get this bottom case off. And it's probably as deep as I'll go. My biggest concern, I'm, I'm not sure that it will idle. It looks pretty gross. It's been sitting for a while. I imagine the carb is pretty gummed up. Uh, if I can get down to the carb and get it off completely, that'd be great. I got it on this side. Yeah, the carb does feel pretty sticky, so. All right, keep going.
nothing too scary. Just looking a little dirty. Got some fuel pulling up right there. This linkage is a little sticky. All right, so that's the carburetor right there. Let's see if I can get that out. Got to get the bottom cleaned up too. A lot of fuel pulling around. So I just took this air cleaner off. All this residue right here, you could tell fuel has been dumping out and turn it into varnish over time. Bunch more right here. Nothing on the outside of the fuel bowl. I think it was coming off, dripping off on the outside of this, contaminating the bottom of the case. So something in the carb is leaking and that's enough of a reason for me to just want to take it off and clean it up. Now, how the hell am I going to do that? There's a nut right here, and there's a nut way back there. So I'm gonna have to take off this fan. So check this out. I got this tiny wrench and a bunch of other wrenches at a yard sale or an estate sale or something. I probably spent like five bucks. I've never used them before. They're just kicking around. And the nuts to get this carburetor off are like really tucked in there. I'm like, no way, do I get to use that wrench? Yup, it's perfect. Five sixteenths, look, it's already loose. Boom, so without this wrench, I wouldn't have been able to get that carb out, but all went to plan. Got it. So I'm just gonna take a minute here to clean up the bottom of the engine. It was covered in oil and drippy fuel. It's pretty gross. I'm going to drain the oil out. Pretty normal. Doesn't smell like fuel. It's not gritty or anything. Alright, so this is as clean as it's going to get. Uh, next, I'm going to work on the carburetor. I'm just going to disassemble and clean it and put it back together again. Start by taking off these old hoses. Oh yeah, it's like all varnish. And it had fuel in it. So it's all banged up for some reason. Pins in there kind of tight. Okay. Seals are coming out pretty easy. Nothing looks dried or swollen. It's all kind of glued together by varnish. Gross.
Nothing's blocked up. Just all gunky. All right, so I'm gonna throw these pieces into some gasoline, let them soak and clean out a little bit. Float is definitely floating. Why is it all bent up though? It's weird. Fucking weird. Come back to that later. All right, I let these soak overnight. Looking a little better, but the carb here needs to be cleaned up. I got a wire brush I can do that with. Yeah, the bowl needs some love too. All right, so there'll be some additional cleanup to do. All right, carburetor's as clean as I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna take this out to the garage and blow out all the little holes with compressed air. So this is the part where I went and blew the carb out with compressed air, but failed to film it. Okay, all the parts have been cleaned up and the carb is ready for reassembly. Try to clean up the needle a little bit. Ah, it looks fine. Get the needle seat back in place. Get this needle seat down. Okay. Drop the needle in. Get the float in place. There we go. All right, that's in. Almost forgot the jet. Okay. Cleaned out of all the varnish and no longer sticking in any place. The action's much better. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is get the carb back on the engine and then I can uh, move on to reassembling the case. A couple of linkages that are important to get lined up correctly. Everything where it should be. Okay. Carb is reattached. So carb is cleaned and back on. Now I can move on to cleaning the case and getting the whole thing put back together. So before the case goes back on, there's a few small parts that need to go back on the engine, like the fan cover and part of the intake for the carb, as well as the mounting feet. I think they're like rubber isolators that go here on the bottom. So I'll take care of that right now. Uh, now I'm going to start reassembling the case. Start with the case bottom and see if I can get it sitting flat. Alright, I can see here. That's really dented out. Which is making this foot sit a little high. So, yeah, so I'm going to try banging it back into place with a piece of wood. Okay, it looks like I fixed the issues with the bottom case. Uh, everything is pretty much parallel now, at least much better. And uh, it's sitting flat. So that's gonna bring mounting tabs like this in alignment with each other that I got in the front and back. Case should go together much easier now.
So with the dents in the case all hammered out, it's time for reassembly. So I changed the oil, fixed the case, it's not wobbling around anymore, took the carb off, disassembled, cleaned it, reassembled. So the last thing to do is put some gas in it and see if it runs. So, as you can see, engine's running fine and it's idling. However, I haven't confirmed that it's actually putting out the right voltage. So I went online and I picked up a factory repair manual so I can figure out all the little carb adjustments and governor adjustments. So I gotta wait for those items to arrive, but in the next video, take it apart again, fine tune it. All right, thanks for watching.